Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Anna here and um, as you know, I'm on the Cambridge Weight Plan. I am posting my weight loss uh, on a weekly basis and this is my channel when I keep you all, where I keep you all updated of how I'm getting on, my progress, how I'm feeling, my learnings, any key things that are top of mind. Um, so welcome back, take a seat, have a drink. Look at this little caravan cup, hey? Uh, it's more of a summery one. My uh, winter ones, Christmassy ones, should be coming up soon. Um, but I'm kind of holding on to next week. Uh, maybe the weekend they'll break up. But grab a seat and um, yeah, let's have a little chat. So first of all, um, all I will say is Christmas has taken over my house. You can see uh, some old wrapping paper, although that's birthday wrapping paper, but stuff everywhere. Um, it's a good job. I have no intention of showing you what's going on around me. It's a good job you can only see the confines of this video because if you saw the bombshell of everything else in my um, in my home office, my home study, you would be horrified. Um, so something needs to happen but I have no time until the weekend so I need to get that in order before getting started. Anyway, outside of my logistics and this crazy, crazy hair situation I have going on, um, let's get down to business because what you want to know is how I have got on this week. So after um, a blank week where uh, my Cambridge consultant wasn't around to weigh me because she was on an amazing holiday um, and an amazing winter break, the news are in. I've weighed myself for two weeks and chun, 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 the weight loss is two kilos, which um true to me i should have this worked out but i'm just going to look at it on my phone so i can calculate it and tell you two kilos times 2.3 equals 4.46 pounds so four and a half pounds uh in two weeks i am pretty happy with that it's about the average of a kilo a week which is is great i'm happy with the average especially at this point in time so i am a very happy person right now um but what does that mean the total so the total i'm up to I believe is 43 and three quarter kilos so 43.75 times 2.23 that's a total of 97 and a half pounds i am so close to the 100 pound mark um, and if you divide that for 14, it gives you the stones. So that's 6.9. I am like 0.1 away from a total of seven stone weight loss. Mm, I'm so happy. So, um, and also it didn't happen last week when I weighed myself on Monday, but um, I'm on the cusp of going down the next weight level, you know, like, um, if you're in stone, it's going down the next stone. If you're in kilos, it's going down that kind of the next level of uh, the next number down. Um, so I am hoping that that is going to happen. Look at this, what's happened there? Right, let me see, let me sort this out because my hair is just not playing along today. Okay, there we go. Um, so where was I? kilos yes i'm about to go down the next kilo bracket so i am delighted with the total weight loss i'm delighted with 43 um and three quarter kilos in i think this is week 28 um my lucid app tells me that i believe i've been doing this for about 202 203 days i mean this is possibly getting close to being the longest i've been on a diet so i am so happy i still feel really good with it i feel like i'm on top of it i know what i'm doing so i am good um and if you watch my q a last week if you didn't because it's long i know i'm sorry it was a much longer video than usual um but at the same time i wanted to make sure that i gave the different questions sufficient airtime so if you found it useful i am so glad um if there's any other questions that you have please let me know uh, and if you have any feedback, as always, let me know if you thought that it was useful or if you would prefer me to cover other things. Um, but anyway, so what is the topic of this week? Um, and uh, for me, it's about staying in control. So two things have happened this week that have made me think about this. So 
One is, I was looking on Instagram, and I'm not going to shame who it was, it was something um, related to Cambridge diet, uh, I can't, I've been trying to find it, I don't know, it's not sure if it's official, not official, I don't think it is, um, but somebody was, were ex, uh, was expressing the feelings that if it's Christmas and you're not, um, I'm not going to say exactly what it was, but if it's Christmas and you're not eating or you're not going, oh, sod it because it's Christmas, I'll just do whatever, then is it really Christmas after all? Mmm, big subject. Controversial. I'm really going to give my opinions on this because... I've been in that space before, um, and I have fairly strong views about that now. And I guess I say now because that's what I was last year. So a year ago, wind back a whole 12 months, around this time of the year, I had been on about at least five different Christmas parties, about three different Christmas lunches. Um, I had done quite a lot of activity around Christmas which clearly involved food and drink and sweets and I'm pretty sure um, Hubby and I had probably had a box of chocolates open and running free flow in the house for about a month at least. Um, I used to totally uh, engage in um, as well as a takeaway at the weekend maybe even midweek because I was feeling too lazy and tired. Um, we were also, oh, one of my biggest, biggest weak points is ice cream. So especially Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And in winter they have the Minter Wonderland, which is a mint chocolate with uh, big chunks, uh, mint ice cream with big chunks of mint chocolate. But um, I mean, I'll engage in any of them. I Chunky Monkey, Cherry Garcia, uh, Cinnamon Rolls, I mean, you name them. They make them, I eat them. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, or I ate them. So ice cream was a big thing for me and um, desserts and chocolates and nuts and all of the sorts of things that you have uh, around at Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I'm sorry, I'm just focusing on, on what I do know. Um, but I had been running on all of that kind of stuff in the background for about a month, plus celebrations, plus not changing the way I was eating. And then it was Christmas, and you know it's Christmas, so why are you not going to just eat whatever you want? It's just an excuse to go. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was happening. And then um, it's my father's birthday mid-January, so of course I had to couldn't possibly start a diet if we were going to celebrate his birthday together and they were going to come over and visit so clearly I couldn't do a diet somewhere in between Christmas and New Year so for me New Year just lasts until second third sometimes fifth so and all of that period is the Christmas festive period so of course that's going to be full on um so that was my full-on Christmas period and then birthdays came in January and then, because um, it's my father's, but it's also my husband's and my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, so January is a very busy month and then going to February and I have my brother and um, my grandmother there and somebody else's birthday and of course it's Valentine's and it's also um, somewhere in there is the anniversary on when, when we first got together, so there's that happening, and then before you know it was March and it was Easter, and you know, I couldn't possibly be dieting just before Easter, and we just finished celebrating anniversaries and birthdays, so it makes no sense to start the diet, so you might as well just continue, and before that happened, and it's another lot of birthdays, oh, and I was traveling somewhere along the way with work, and, um, before you know it, it was May and I could not stand the sight of myself. And it was really this mentality of just because there's this and that and the other happening, then it means it's my excuse to just free flow it. And free flow it was. It was just like just non-stop eating fest. Um, and somewhere along the way, I was also physically exhausted, I was tired, I had no energy, so I couldn't possibly be bothered cooking because it's such an effort. So let me order a takeout that takes a whole hour to deliver because I couldn't be bothered to make something that could possibly take you about 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes max. So that was happening too. I was in this whole wonderful vicious circle. So I guess when I saw that Instagram post around 
you know, if it's Christmas and you're not just eating whatever you want because it's Christmas and you're not doing Christmas right, it really triggered something with me. I just, you know, I remember it was just the fact that it was that exact behaviour that led me to just down the path of being the biggest I had ever been. And I think in that period of time, I put on um, between Christmas and Easter, I probably put on about easy 20, 25 kilos because of that. Now, I know that if I do things, I'm going to do them right. So I do the weight loss right, but I also do the weight gain right, clearly, if I put on that much. Um, because let me work that out. If it's 25 kilos, that's times 2.23, 57 pounds divided by 14. Um, Ah, two five times two point two three divided by fourteen. Yeah, three point nine four stone. Well done. Um, so I put four stone between December and April last year, um, which are pretty much close to the four stones that it took me to lose the weight, so that I would feel like I hadn't completely ballooned myself out of control. It was what I kind of call damage control of how big I had got and then just go down to a different level of of size uh, even though I still have to lose a lot of weight so oh that was so frustrating so seeing that and just seeing that that's what we're putting out there um just made me understand that I mean I was the one doing this right I'm not blaming the person that posted that um Nobody told me that at the time. I was doing that myself. I would have probably posted something similar myself uh, if I was of a posting nature uh, on Instagram. Um, but I was, uh, you know, that's the mentality I was in. And that's what I was stuck. And that led me down this path of complete loss of control. Like, whatever. Just because is an excuse to just not think about the consequences of what you're doing. And then just... So there, you just carry on regardless and don't think about the consequences. And before you know it, you can't even recognize yourself in the mirror. You can't fit into any of your clothes. You feel so uncomfortable. Um, so that really triggered something in me. Um, and the other thing that happened is that as Hubby has started to eat, he's gone up the calories. And uh, where he works, they've got an amazing catering um uh, facility and they do uh, a lot of different events and things and one of the the thing that they do is they have something that they call something for the weekend so they will um, the catering company will prepare things that they will sell to the employees for the weekend so they may make uh, freshly baked bread like sourdough bread or ciabattas or uh, you know, like a rosemary and sea salt bread or something like that. They also do donuts, like the classic one that we always talk about that it must be amazing, but we're going nowhere near is white chocolate and pistachio donuts. Um, so they did something for Christmas, which was chocolate salami, which is basically like a big block of chocolate with nuts and uh, stuff to make look like a salami. So you can just cut it in slices and eat that. Uh, they sold stolen. So it's like a kilo loaf of stolen um and other stuff so he was thinking about what he was going to eat and um he thought you know what I've got enough calories now because he's built up to over 1800 now and next week he'll be going up to 2000 so he's really built up his calories now um so that he can afford to eat a few things so he still needs to be controlled and his team needs to be the right balance of protein and veg and a little bit of carb but he's looking to see how can he incorporate uh, other things so he's been struggling with incorporating other things because it feels like it's going to lead him astray um but he thought you know what i'm going to i'm going to try it so he went on a christmas meal and he uh, he accounted for it he did really well um and then he brought his christmas goodies the stolen the chocolate salami and a loaf of sourdough bread home and he's been doing great. The bread, he's been cutting slices that are controlled. He weighs it. He measures it on his Lose It app. He's been having that with maybe a bit of cream cheese and ham. And that um, is helping him to make sure that he has about three, 350, um, 400 cal breakfast, uh, about four, 500 cal lunch. And then he'll have about 600 cal dinner. And then the difference 
will be the snacks that he has throughout the day and typically it's an apple maybe a couple of clams uh, and uh, clementines that's our short for clementine clams and um and then he's been having a bit extra so he was holding back on the clams and the apple so he could have a piece of stolen and he um he just loves marzipan so that was like right up his street so he's been having quite a few guilty feelings because he's eating that and he's not put weight on by the way because he started eating that last week and he got weight and he still lost half a kilo in two weeks and he really needs to stop losing weight because he just does not need to lose any more weight um he's he's great um but he's been really feeling really guilty so it's just amazing that it's this combination of food and guilt but also promotion of food and just shoving it down your face and just just eating as much as you can so i'm i'm stuck in this dual space of seeing the guilt of certain food and then the promotion of certain food and the other thing that that he's going through as well is that as he's eating the stolen he can he's feeling I guess the conflict of the old habits that we had potentially creeping in because we used to like this is no exaggeration that kilo loaf of stolen which is about that big we probably would have had cut in half and then cut in half again and given each other a quarter of that to have as a an evening snack with a mm -hmm. cup of coffee mm -hmm. and we would have had that and gone mm -hmm, that is so tasty you know what we're going to go back and have that second piece an hour from now because why not because it's Christmas because therefore we can so we would have done that um, but what we found is that uh, something like 150 160 grams worth of this stolen is about 350 calories so he's in this space of seeing what the actual portion size of these things should be the calories that go along with that the craving of wanted it badly and the guilt of I'm eating all of these things I hope that it doesn't mean that I'm going to go back to my old ways and yet you've got all of this pressure all around you so I came across it on Instagram because most people don't talk to me about food or stuff at the moment because I know I'm dieting now so they they just know to avoid it um but he's got all of these people around him to just talking about Christmas, talking about what they're going to eat. Also, because he's lost weight, there's this general concept of, well, you've lost weight. So you can afford to eat what you want now because you've lost weight. Not, not you've done so well, continue what you're doing because you need to maintain what you have. No, no. You're thin now. So off you go. Start eating. Um, so it's quite an interesting dynamic. And it just made me think about, what are we doing to ourselves because i mean so allow me this i know that i might be in a slightly preachy space because i feel um that i am being all good with just sticking to my products and what i'm doing but what i think what's really happening is that it's it's helping me to take an outside perspective to the madness that is created around food for Christmas and for the Christmas period and the season, you know, the holiday, Christmas, New Year type of uh, period. Um, and don't get me wrong, I come from uh, a family that we know how to celebrate in style. So we know, I celebrate Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. We've also got into the habit of doing another celebratory meal on Boxing Day um, on the 26th. And of course, New Year's Eve and then New Year's Day. Um, and uh, fun fact, I don't know if I've told you, I'm Spanish. So the Spanish people also celebrate uh, on the 6th of January. That's the day that growing up we would get the, the presents uh, for Christmas. Uh, so coming from a Spanish family, then Christmas period lasted all the way till the 6th. So I've grown knowing that you're going to have that lots of um, specific chocolate sweets and stuff for for the Christmas period that last all the way from about the 20th maybe the 15th of December and you continue all the way till the 6th of January so it is one hell of a big celebration period um so with that happening around I, I this is the first time that I feel completely outside of it but I'm seeing nothing but 
ads about food on TV, cooking programs that is all about food, more food, and then some more food. Of course, chocolate, sweets, everything is on overdrive. Um, everybody in the office, you want to be nice and you want to be sharing, but everybody just keeps on bringing chocolates and sweets and mince pies and all of this kind of stuff, which means that you're just surrounded by food all the time. And it's just like, how are you going to avoid it when it's all around you? And and then on top of that, we build this sense of it is the season. Therefore, you're not celebrating if you're not eating. Um, so what are we doing to ourselves? Uh, really, it, it is quite surprising. And don't get me wrong. I am somebody that believe that probably a lot of celebrations these days are centered around food. It involves having a feast with those around you that you love and you care for and it's about bringing people together and especially family celebrations is all about bringing people together and we are all used to taking care of people through feeding them somehow we've grown up in society by becoming feeders we love through feeding others is is something that happens so and if we're not feeding others it feels like we're not taking care of them we're not celebrating correctly so that that is quite a thing to work your way through because we've all we've not all but most of us if you celebrate Christmas you've grown up with that and therefore it's really going against the grain to not do that um so my so why am I ranting about all of this because um and this may make me persona non grata and you might think Anna just go back in your soapbox and let us be and let us celebrate our Christmas but you know, I'm just going to stick to my products. I'm going to do that. I don't have a problem with it. But for all of you out there who are either not on the Cambridge diet or you are or you're transitioning or you're thinking about what to do, I guess I wanted to share a thought with you, which is about, I'm not saying you don't celebrate and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a treat if that's what you want to do. But what are you going to do to celebrate in a way that you feel in control? Because what happened to me this time last year was that I allowed myself to get into a state where I was easily influenced by all of the things around me. I completely lost all sense of proportion and it meant that I just I was just easily influenced by any mince pie cake chocolate or anything that went past me it was just not even a way to think about it um so the thought for you is I'm not saying if you want to celebrate if you want to have your full turkey dinner if you want to have your chocolates if you want to have all of the stuff I'm not saying don't eat it it's up to you whether you eat it or not if you're going to do it all I'm asking is how much food are you do you actually want to have and how do you think about the food that you're going to have and the treats that you're going to have in a way that you own them and you are in control of what you're going to be eating and that you don't allow yourself to be influenced by everything else that is happening around you so if you want to have your christmas meal and you want to have a pud and you want to have a mince pie after have it but count it, count those calories, track it and allow yourself to know this is what I'm choosing to have. Imagine this is your pie. This is what I'm choosing to have. I am going to own the fact that I'm having this pie. I'm accounting for it. Whether it's in my calorie allowance or not, I make the choice consciously to have this pie, knowing that it's going to put me over my calorie allowance, knowing that I'm going to have to compensate and make up for it knowing that today I choose to have this, but tomorrow, what do you choose to do the day after that? Are you still going to have a mince pie? In which case, do you realize that if you're having a mince pie or two mince pies or five chocolates or whatever it might be, that you are blowing your calorie budget um, and what that actually means for you? Or are you just burying your head in the sand and not even thinking about the consequences of what you're putting in your mouth will have on you and your body and your self-esteem. So, um, I mean, what I'm discussing with, with him at home is what is it that you want to have for Christmas? 
and how, you know, what would make you feel good about the meal that you're going to have, what would make you feel like you have had a special meal that you have enjoyed, what treats do you want to build in so that we can work around the meal and the treats and everything and think about the full package of everything you're going to have from breakfast through to dinner so you still feel like you're in control of what you're eating rather than becoming a victim that you're just mindless eating your way through all of the different events. Um, and I guess that's the thought really that I wanted to share with you, which is, are you making conscious choices about what you're going to be eating over the next few days? Or are you allow yourself, are you going to allow yourself to become like I did last year and just completely throw caution out the window and just completely ruin my body? Now, I'm sure that you won't go as far as I did because mine is a fairly extreme case. Um, but that's what we do to our bodies and it takes a lot of hard work and focus and determination to take the weight off if that's what you're doing. So don't allow yourself to get out of control so that you go back in your progress and then you feel worse about yourself. Because um, the interesting thing that happens is that we all start with Christmas and it's Christmas is like everything goes out the window, forget about consequences or anything because it's Christmas, so eat whatever you want because it's a special day. Um, but before you know it, you're partying your way through to New Year. And then the, the first comes, and it's not that we really start with a New Year's resolution on the first, or maybe you do, but I definitely don't. Um, for me, the first is a PJ day at home, where I only get dressed to take the dog out, uh, but otherwise you're going to find me my PJ at home doing absolutely nothing. That is the perfect Christmas, uh, New Year's day for me. Um, so... If you find yourself on that day, then you start to think about your year ahead and you start to think about what you want to achieve and what you're doing, then you're probably going to realize that you have an uphill struggle that you've probably just made worse because you weren't thinking about what you were doing. So I'm not trying to be a party pooper. Have a great time, but plan for it. Be conscious. Think about how you're going to be in control. Think about how you're going to master what you're eating and how you're going to master the choices around the celebrations and what you're going to have in a way that you feel that you're owning it and therefore you feel like, you know what, I'm making the choice to have this, but I won't have that because this is what's good for me. So I choose where I'm going, what my treats are going to be and where they're going to be rather than allow this whole range of things that get passed in front of you to just be a mindless source and maybe I'm just preaching for preaching's sake and you're like yeah Anna, just because you did that doesn't mean that we're going to do that um but I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in, in how I did and you know I I feel very lucky that um the Cambridge uh diet has helped me to through doing the the control of just having products, it really has allowed me to understand all of this hype that is built around food, but the real celebration isn't really around food. And all of the streets that you want to have now, if you're halfway through your diet, they are going to be there. But don't allow them to take over and don't allow them to take over your life because they are just one day and you need to continue to live with yourself the day after. So Make choices that make you feel proud of yourself because you're being in control, you're making the right choices. You know that whatever you have, enjoy it. Enjoy it fully, make the most of it, but just choose the whatever are the key things that you think this is worth blowing my calorie budget over and therefore that's what I'm going to have. And outside of that, I'm just not going to do it. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying. Uh, I'm not telling you what to do. By the way, this is just a suggestion. Um, I'm choosing to not have any of that and to continue with my products. If you're choosing to do that, kudos, good on you, good luck, all the best. Um, if you're not, there is no shame. You do whatever you want to do because at the end of the day, you do your life. We all have so many different commitments and everything. And you may just say, look, is my uh, is my occasion. I want to enjoy it. It's a big thing for me and therefore I'm going to have it. Wonderful. Enjoy it. Do it. Do it one day. Maybe two.
not 20. That's my only, um, is it ask, is it challenge? More like a challenge, that's my challenge, my counsel, my provocation to you all as we approach um, this festive season. So that is everything I'm going to say um, this week. I hope you find it useful. Please don't be mad at me if you agree or if you disagree. I do want to hear about it, um, whether you agree or whether you disagree or whether you have a completely different perspective and you think that there's something that I need to think about or that we all think, need to think about. Um, I may try to post a video just before Christmas, but I'm also conscious that nobody wants to hear about diets just before Christmas. So, um, uh, but I'll still try to give you my update next week um, so that I can keep on top of everything. Um, but please uh, enjoy it. Uh, take this in the spirit of, um, you know, positive, a lot of positive intent, wanting to think about it and wanting you to enjoy yourselves, to have a great time, uh, but also to make sure that you survive the, <laughs> the festive season in a way that still makes you feel in control and on top of your diet and on top of your choices um, and that you're fully owning what you're doing as opposed to allowing the hype to get the better of you and to cloud your judgment. Um, I may just be projecting what I have done in the past onto you. So if I am, um, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. Um, but other than that, have a great week. I hope you're having a fantastic time. Hope that you're all great out there and I can't wait to hear from all of you. Please leave comments, please subscribe if you haven't already done so, hit that alarm button, all of those wonderful things um, and I will talk to you all soon. All the best. Bye.